Hello and welcome, I'm Ankit Teja and you are watching Tech It Out. This episode is going to be special because India is celebrating 75 years of independence and we are going to be focusing on technology that is helping the country build a stronger defense system. We introduce you to some homegrown defense tech startups that are helping the Indian Armed Forces. But before that, let's look at why there is a strong focus on adopting new technologies for protecting Indian borders. India faces many challenges along its borders. It has a long history of territorial disputes with both Pakistan and China. But in today's day and age, defence is no longer limited to just geographical borders. Cyber threats also pose a danger to national security. We have a cyber war. We have uh, threats at airports, our infrastructures, our cities are at more threat than they ever were. The biggest tech threats are actually going to be uh, you know, on the lines of AI. The biggest challenge we have is how do we ensure uh, that these technologies are safe and cannot be breached. Uh, for example, when we talk of uh, drones, now drones work on radio frequency where uh, the, the controller is communicating with these uh, devices which are in the air but we know for a fact that RF frequencies can be hijacked and can be hacked so th that's where we need to build additional level of security and uh, and have robust control and countermeasures the days of protecting the borders by human eyes alone are long over enter technology India is moving to smarter ways of surveillance it is adopting cutting-edge technologies to counter cross-border terror attacks and most importantly, the country is using new age gadgets that can go beyond the reach, vision and capabilities of humans. Many of these high-tech gadgets and innovative tech solutions are indigenously developed Defence tech startups in India are gaining momentum. They are making great strides in empowering and supporting the country's defence efforts. As India completes 75 years of independence, we introduce you to the brightest Indian minds who have leveraged artificial intelligence, deep technology and machine learning to design high-end security solutions. The first startup we want to introduce you to is Cronyai. It's designing intelligent solutions that are playing a key role in protecting India's borders. How are they doing it? By making sure that machines can see the world in three dimensions, much like us humans. Here is more. Whenever we hear the term defense technologies, our minds immediately rush to visualize some high-end devices, drones, surveillance cameras, night vision devices, or even robots. Possibly because that is what we have seen in movies. But no gadget can perform effectively unless it has a powerful software inside. CEO and co-founder of deep tech startup Cron AI Tushar Chhabra echoes the same sentiment. His focus is clear. Design a platform that can enable machines to function autonomously. We always end up seeing the world around us in a specific way and we often confuse that machines will also see the world in the same way. But that is absolutely not true. Machines are not able to perceive the world like humans do and therefore passive technologies like cameras inherently failed 
to reach any levels of autonomy from security to autonomous driving to autonomous rovers which could secure our infrastructure. And the solution to this is very simple. Building an AI and deep learning enabled platform which could allow these machines to see and understand the world in three dimensions. Look at these videos and see how their solution works. As the firm claims, put it in any complex environment, markets, airports or even cafes and it can identify and track even the smallest details. Inherently, we are a data company for machines. We allow machines to understand the world in three dimensions, detect something, understand there is something around them, classify those objects, track those objects, how are they moving around them, and also the capability to tell them in which directions those objects are heading and where those objects will be next. This is so important because only if you understand each and every small dynamic of objects moving around a machine, that machine can reach the levels of autonomy it intends to. Interestingly, India is using Cron AI's technology to secure borders and ensure national security. We work with the likes of Bell in India who have used our technology to create solutions to secure very, very complex borders. Uh, because of security reasons, we cannot share the journey, but really, really complex international border scenarios where we need to track intrusions and we want to reach certain levels of autonomy to make our forces feel safer. Then our India technology partner Slingshot has invested millions of dollars in creating solution technology layers specifically to control international borders, complex infrastructure, airports, and they are also now deploying it across multiple airports in India and infrastructures in India where they need to track people, intruders, very, very efficiently. When it comes to national security, the accuracy of a technology is of paramount importance. See, accuracy is a very vaguely used term uh, specifically uh, when you talk about the ecosystem or the infrastructure where technologies are being deployed in India. Uh, we have technology deployed with surveillance systems, etc. in places where you have 100 people in less than 5 meters square, which is not seen anywhere else in the world. And we get accuracies offers of 96.5%. But when you talk about terrains like the LOC, that is where our deep learning in AI basically went ahead and was able to understand the changing dynamics and achieve accuracies of almost 98.5% in very, very complicated environments when it was snowing, raining and foggy. Artificial intelligence is promising and we need more such deep tech startups to empower our defense efforts. Next on our list of promising defense tech startups is IdeaForge. The firm is developing drone solutions for a variety of applications, including defense. We get you more details in our next report. The war in Ukraine has once again highlighted one aspect of modern warfare, the use of drones. Currently, Indian forces are mostly dependent on countries like Israel for its drones. The dependence is slowly making way for indigenous systems. Founded in 2007, Drone manufacturing startup IdeaForge has played a significant role in fortifying India's drone ecosystem. These drones are being used for surveillance and counter-insurgency. We felt that uh, you know, this technology could really come in handy uh, when our uh, country was going through a very different time period, uh, especially when the Mumbai attacks happened and we thought that this technology could really be useful to see through some of what is happening inside the window. Today, IdeaForge is a leading player in the Indian drone industry. In fact, IdeaForge is the first Indian firm that has bagged repeated contracts from the Indian Army for its unmanned aerial vehicle called Switch. So, uh, primary products that are today deployed with our defense forces is uh, Q6, 
and uh, switch which are primarily deployed in the high altitude areas and also uh, being used for the border surveillance as well as the border mapping uh, use cases. Today, uh, if you see that uh, when the Galwan uh, case happened, we had no uh, eye in the sky to help us understand what was happening on the borders, where the movement of the troops were happening. And that's where today our switch product, when deployed, uh, is giving a complete uh, endurance of about 120 minutes. We are doing a 15 kilometers plus range and also giving about a, uh, about 20x plus uh, of zoom capabilities to do the maximum coverage uh, in those border areas. And this is one of its kind product where access in the largest or you can say the highest altitude in the terrain uh, with a minus 30 degree temperature rating, uh, it's a class uh, which is not uh, easily find. Idea Forge has deployed over thousands of systems in services, including the Indian Army, Navy, Air Force, CRPF, and BSF. Our products uh, have been deployed all across the country. Today, when we speak, uh, our products are being used in the highest, most altitude in the Leh Ladakh region. Uh, we have products which are being used in most of the Union territories of the country as well. CRPF has had the most success uh, in using our products. Also, Indian Army has uh, been able to do very uh, great live demonstrations of our technology to safeguard lives on the borders. The Indian Army is now pushing for indigenous combat drones. It has even launched the HIM Dronathon program in collaboration with the Drone Federation of India. Its aim is to catalyze and provide focused opportunities to the Indian drone ecosystem. As drones usher in a new era of warfare, India's growing UAV industry has begun to take flight. Fast-changing dynamics with our neighbors require new, smarter ways of surveillance. Indian startup Optimize Electrotech is working on that front. It's strengthening India's first line of defense with its high-tech surveillance system. is imaging surveillance. Within imaging, there are uh, the, the electromagnetic spectrum or you know whatever waves we see around us or we don't see around us rather. <laughs> you know, all of them, they have lots of data and a lot of data inside. For example, we have visible light, which is, you know, violet to red, which we all can see. But then there's also an infrared. Within infrared, there are various sub-segments where you can see sometimes some of that can be transparent to water vapor. Some of that can be radiating, some of that can be more, susceptible, more uh, sensitive to the thermal radiations, etc. So what we do is, we pull together multiple types of such systems, which you could say, say you know, camera in layman parlance. We put together multiple of them, get the entire data together. There is an AI layer which fuses all these images together and finds out from different means what's happening around you. So if somebody is uh, has just used a weapon, you would know that. If there's a vehicle, you would know that. If there's a vehicle which is really a combat vehicle and not a normal vehicle, you would again know that. If it's an infantry vehicle but not really a combat vehicle, you'd be having a little, you know, a lower uh, alarm level, but you would know that. So all of this is what we get directly to the soldier. His Ahmedabad-based startup is empowering India's defense sector with its security and surveillance solutions. Optimized Electrotech claims its products are quite advanced. They can help monitor threats, track enemies, and protect significant assets. We don't just detect that there's something out there, which a radar would typically do, or a laser would take a huge amount of power to just figure out you know, what the shape is. In our systems, you won't require all of that. It's a passive system. We don't emit anything. So the enemy never ever gets to know that we are there. And using the system, we are able to detect, recognize, and identify the class of threat that is out there. So that is something which is different from the other types of imaging systems. As one would expect, its border surveillance solutions also include a long-range surveillance system. It has been indigenously developed and can detect threats in all weather and light conditions. 
It can even produce close-up pictures of people and vehicles from afar. There is a vision series which is focused on border surveillance and which is where uh, we are focusing a large part of our energy at. Here we have got imaging systems that are for long distance imaging starting from 3 kilometers all the way to 30 kilometers. And in here with all the products that we have, the Noctuition for example is our flagship product today. Uh, it is a day and night surveillance system with 360 degree you know, movement and it can automatically detect, recognize and identify 12 different classes of threats. This is one of our flagship products. Then we also have the Omnivision, which is which can detect um, vehicles up to 30 kilometers, which can detect people at 12 kilometers. The solutions are useful for border surveillance, perimeter intrusion detection, and access control. From the defense side, Indian Army is our current customer, who have had uh, uh, trust in us for few of their projects. So we have worked with them on certain pilot projects. We are currently having one of the uh, a long, uh, a long drawn uh, provisional supply order that we have that's going on, and we are also participating in and a party to some of their future projects that are coming up into different commands. Securing borders is the first line of defense for any nation, and technology has changed the way we protect borders. Constant surveillance is making it easier for troops to identify and remove cross-border threats. New age gadgets, along with artificial intelligence, continue to strengthen the Indian border security system. But will we see tech outdo human intelligence in the years to come? Indian soldiers, especially those who are deployed at high altitudes, face immense challenges. But some technologies can help ease their burden so that they can focus on their mission. Watch how Taurus Robotics is making it possible. Chennai-based startup Taurus Robotics is a young Indian defense startup. It manufactures unmanned ground vehicles that can help the Indian Army ferry heavy loads. There are a lot of threats in the Northern and the Central Command in the uh, line of control, especially at the borders, due to infiltration from the neighboring nations. Our products, you know, when we try to explore those areas to apply what, uh, to understand what the needs of the uh, soldiers are, so we went there to explore the scenarios. We saw the conditions, we saw the extreme weather and the terrain conditions. So we are trying to develop a product that can take up the payload or the all the work pressure on the soldiers. They want, we want to reduce the burden that this, the soldier is facing. So it, this product can be a recce, recce warrior or where a, in a situation where a human cannot go in a very risky areas. So these products can go do the job for them. So basically to reduce the workload and help the Jawan or the soldier to concentrate on his missions. According to the startup, these vehicles are modular so they can cater to diverse mission requirements. Our UGV is modular in nature, so we are able to swap the vehicle, the parameters of the vehicle, like the components, the wheel. We can make the wheel to turn into trucks. So that is the amount of modularity we are trying to implement into our product that can be used for multiple applications, multiple terrain. Apart from being modular, they are also autonomous. The autonomous feature is used for logistics, mainly from point A to point B, transportation of goods or removal of casualties from uh, critical areas. At the same time, it can be used for remote piloted operation like a recce warrior. Uh, basically, that's where the human cannot go or uh, is not supposed to go. So these are the autonomous and the remote piloted operations these UGVs can be used for. Unmanned ground vehicles or UGVs will undoubtedly play a crucial role in military land operations in the future. While global manufacturers also offer similar solutions, the products by Taurus Robotics are available at one-third of the global price. The Indian Army is experimenting with indigenously developed unmanned all-terrain vehicles. With its competitive pricing and modular approach, Taurus Robotics seems to be on the right track. Right now, we are intending to target the Indian Army because our name itself states unmanned ground vehicle. We're also trying to understand the need and the pain points of the Navy and the Air Force so we can implement our customizer products and implement to their needs as well. 
When it comes to smart water management, Indian coastal and maritime security is of paramount importance. Marine robotics firm IRO understands that need and therefore it's designing technologies for underwater inspections. Let's see if it can enhance coastal security. has 15,106 kilometers of land borders and a coastline of about 7,516 kilometers. The country is striving to strengthen coastal security at par with land border security. Over the last few years, India has established a robust multi-layered surveillance system for coastal security. Kochi-based marine robotics startup IROF is aiding the Indian security forces in their defense efforts. In fact, IROF Tuna is said to be India's first commercial underwater drone. What we do is we build underwater drones or called as remotely operated vehicles, which helps in surveying underwater infrastructures or our assets. So this is similar to an aerial drone, but it can survey and go down up to 100 meters of water depth and give you live video feeds. It's not just a camera, but it has the capability to attach multiple payloads like saunas, acoustic imaging and other payloads. Marine robotics firm IROV has built indigenous underwater drones and has supplied them to various defense and research organizations we do work with a couple of DRDO labs, which comes under the Ministry of Defense. We work with uh, Coast Guard. So most of these products are used for underwater surveillance in the coastal areas and also detecting other threats in the underwater area. So it helps in uh, getting an eye underwater to do and survey any kind of assets or threats which are being looking around in the ocean. And it also helps in training our divers and how they are operating in underwater. Underwater inspection is more challenging than land or air inspection because human divers have to deal with high water currents, poor visibility and a hostile environment because of wild marine creatures. And therefore, we need new underwater technologies to make coastal security strong and impenetrable. defense startups are invested in designing innovative security technologies but they need to watch out for cyber security threats because any sort of technological advancement brings along the risk of cyber attacks uh, we talked about artificial intelligence being used in most of these defense technology and that AI is based on data that's been learned over a long period it is licensed from third parties so that's very very crucial then we are looking at data related to sensitive individuals or entities that are of interest. And to safeguard that data, uh, the, the government or India has to have a multi-layer approach. One is uh, isolating critical assets with confidential data from the internet. Uh, the other approach is use of heavy use of biometrics uh, in, in ensuring that only the right individuals or personnel have access to this, uh, to this data. Uh, encryption is very important that uh, at various levels this data has to be encrypted, anonymized, kept at different places. There are some industry uh, you know, standard practices in, in the way data has to be encrypted, especially sensitive critical data, where even if a copy of the data or a slice of the data gets into somebody else's hands, uh, it's of no use. With a clear focus and innovative ideas, defense tech startups are proving to be an asset to the nation. They are also getting a push from the government. The Indian government is aiming to achieve self-reliance and foster innovation and technology development in defence. The Defence Ministry has announced that it will fund startups that can provide solutions to meet the needs of artificial intelligence, advanced imaging, sensor systems, autonomous unmanned systems and secured communication systems, among other technologies. But there is a lot more that can be done. See, I think the, the right initiatives are already in place. We have to stop 
thinking in INR and have to start thinking in global perspectives. 100,000 INR as a rebate for a great patent means nothing. You as a startup could get much better and I strongly feel that the government needs to start bringing R&D tax initiatives in India as soon as possible where startups which are funded by the VC ecosystem should get a significant amount of the money they're spending in R&D back as cash or investments from the government because this will be the biggest driving force to make startups have a reason to stay in India and keep evolving in India and have those patents in India and patents are key for our self-reliance let it be defense or any other activity. When it comes to the sustenance of startups, defense is a very slow moving sector and therefore uh, some cushioning here and there after every few months or years if you come out with something which is saleable, something which you are going to be buying, that would really help the startups in living up to the expectations of people who are investing into them as well as people who are working for them. Uh, I would say it's a very good start and uh, hope this uh, momentum continues in future so that they become more self-reliant uh, rather than importing uh, products from other countries. Indian defense startups have made huge strides in empowering the country's defense efforts and the road ahead looks promising. Well, that's all we have for you in this episode of Tech It Up. We will continue to bring you exciting inventions, new innovations and updates on the latest gadgets. I will be back soon. Until then, keep watching Beyond World is One. And yes, don't forget to follow us on social media. For now, it's me, Ankit Uteja, signing off.